Hello everybody and welcome to a cool scratch tutorials video. Today we are going over a dodge the ball game. If you haven't seen this or you don't know what it is, there's an example on screen right now and it, our bear is trying to dodge the baseballs by moving side to side and if we get hit by the baseball then we fail but we want to catch the apples and every time we catch an apple our points go up by one and if we reach 15 points then we win the game. And if you haven't already, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button as it really helps me out. But for now, let's just get into the video. First off, let's just make our bear character a sprite. So let's delete sprite 1 here, so we have nothing in our character area. Let's go to choose a sprite, and let's go to this bear walking. It is on the third row down, and we just click on it, and we can have bear walking. We can see if we click on the costumes area, there's many different costumes and this basically makes an animation of a bear walking. Next, I say we make ourselves the floor. So let's go to choose a character and then click paint. So I'm just going to go to a rectangle. I'm just going to get rid of the outline. Let's actually go to fill, go to green, and let's select a green we like. Like this green and you just draw your rectangle like so. There we go. It fits on our screen. And then let's just go up here and make it a little bit darker. No, let's keep it where it is and then go and make another rectangle. And let's make this just a little bit darker than our other one. And let's just drag it very a little lower down. And then let's just select both of these and move them to where they fit. And we can just drag this to the bottom of the screen and it looks like some sort of grass. I think this upper part here is a little big, so I'm just going to maybe shrink it, and there we have our grass. So now that we have our grass, let's just make our backdrop. So let's click on backdrops, and let's go to choose a backdrop. I think blue sky works, so I'm just gonna click on it, and we can see that it appears in our background. Next, let's make the baseball, which is the character or the thing that we want our bear to be avoiding. So let's go to choose a sprite and let's type baseball. We can see that appears on screen and this is just our basic layout. We've selected almost everything we need and want for this character. Now let's just get into coding it. So what we want to do is make the we want to make the movement code for our bear. So what we want to do is go to events and drag in one when green flag clicked block. So when we click our green flag, this is just our uh, start button, basically. Let's go to looks and let's drag in a set size block. I say that 100% size for a bear is a little big. So let's just try setting it to 40% and see how that looks. So when I click the green flag, we can see our bear shrinks to 40% size. So I think that's a good size. And let's just drag it down to the very beginning of our grass. And let's make it go to x0. I can just type it in here. And we want our y to be just slightly below the top of our grass area. So I say this is a good area for our bear to be walking on. We can see that it's x10, y negative 106. Let's just make this x0. So my y level is negative 106. So if we go to motion, we can see that our go to block is already uh, corresponding to these coordinates, but if they aren't, be sure to change that. So let's say I move them over here and let's say I set his size to 100. When I click the green flag, our bear will set size to 40% and go to the spot where we chose. Next, what we wanna do is actually make uh, our arrow keys make our bear move. So let's go to control and drag in one forever loop. Next, let's drag in one if then statement, go to sensing, and drag in one key blank press block. Let's say if right arrow pressed, then we want it to move to the right. So go to motion, let's go to change x by five. So if I click the green flag, we can see that if we click our uh, right arrow, our character moves to the right. That'll just make it go to the left. So let's click duplicate on this if then statement drag it below our original one. Let's change this to left arrow and negative five. So if we click our green flag, we can see that we can move our character 
back and forth. Next, what we wanted to do is point when it's going to the left, we want it to point in that direction. And when it's going to the right, we want it to point in the right direction. So to do this, let's just go to point in direction for both of these. When we click our right arrow, we want it to point in direction 90. We can see if we click on this, the arrow is actually pointing the right way. But we can see that when our left arrow it will actually point 90 as well. To change this, let's just drag it to where it will point the, to the left. And when we click the green flag, we can see that it it looks right when we click the right arrow, and it looks left when we click the left arrow. Oh no, our bear actually accidentally turned upside down. An easy fix to this is just to go to down here and put above when green flag clicked, set rotation style left right. This will just make it so our character can look both ways and doesn't go upside down. So we've basically got our movement script down for our bear. Next, we wanted to make it look like it's walking when it's actually walking. So let's go to looks and just go to next costume. When right arrow press, we want to click next costume and let's do it for left arrow too. So when I click the right arrow, we can see that our bear starts uh, being animated, same with our left, and our bear walks across our screen depending on which arrow keys we press. Perfect. Now we've gotten our basic code down for our bear. Next, what we want to do is go to our baseball. So we've gotten our bear script down, but now let's get our baseball script down. So. Let's go to events. When green flag clicked, let me just zoom in here quickly. So when our green flag clicked, I say the baseball's a little big, so let's go to looks and let's just set our size to maybe 50%. That's a good size for our baseball. Next, we wanted to create clones and spawn. We want our baseball to have many different, go to random locations at the top of the screen and then start falling. Now to do, to do this, what we want to do is go to event, I mean, uh, control. <laughs> we want to create clones. Clones are basically just a clone of our image, but they can actually have a specific code inside of them. So when green flag click, we want to create clone of myself. But since we want this to go on forever, let's drag in one forever loop. But we can see that there's no break between uh, forever and create clone of myself which means it will just create like om almost a thousand clones a second. So just to change this, we want it to wait one and a half seconds before creating another clone of itself. Now let's go to when I start as a clone, which is basically the program for when our clone spawns in. So when I start as a clone, we want it to go to a random X position at the top. So let's go to motion and drag in one, go to X and Y statement. We want it to go to X, uh, op let's go to operators, and we want to use the pick random block. It will basically pick a random of what numbers we give it. So let's say negative 200 and 200. It will pick a random number between negative 200 and 200, and it will tell our character to go to that X position. And since we want our ball to be at the very top, let's just make it go to Y 210. So when I click the green flag, we can see uh, we have to wait one and a half seconds, but our clones start spawning in everywhere. We can see that there's two here. Oh, there's one there and there's two here. Now let's make it so our clone will actually start falling down. But first we want our regular character to hide on the screen before we make it a clone. So let's go to when green flag clicked, we want it to actually hide. So, but when we want it, when it's a clone, we want it to show, so drag it under the go to statement. So when I click the green flag, we can see that our clones start appearing at the top, but they're just hovering there, of course, because we have not made the gravity script or the script that'll make our baseballs fall down. Now let's go to control and drag in one repeat until block. We want our character, our baseball, to repeat until it touches a color. 
or touches the ground, basically. So repeat until touching a color. So touching color random. We can click on this color and go down here to where we can actually sample a color from our backdrop area. So we want it to be this ground right over here. So just select that. So it's going to repeat a certain code until it touches this ground. So repeat until touching. We want it to change its Y by or its vertical position by something. Let's make it change Y by negative 6. So continuously fall 6 pixels until it touches the ground. So when we click the green flag, we can see that our baseballs start falling. And then once they touch the ground, they'll stop falling. After our baseballs touch the ground, what we want to do is hide them, or we want them to go away. So we just want to go down to events, and we want to delete this clone under repeat until touching color. So if we try this out, and we click the green flag, we can see that it actually deletes as soon as it touches the ground. So we've got our bear walking script, which will make our bear walk along the screen, and we got our baseball falling. Next, what we want to do is make it so our baseball will sense if it touches the bear. So we can sense if our bear got touched by the baseball, which will show the you failed screen. So let's go to our baseball and let's drag in one if then statement inside of the repeat until. So as soon as it starts falling, it will keep on sensing as it's falling if it's touching the bear. So let's go to sensing and drag in touching and select bear walking. So if touching bear walking, then we want it to broadcast a message to all of these other sprites. We want it to, let's, so to do that, let's just go to events and go to broadcast message. Let's click new message and let's call this you failed. There we go. So it will keep on sensing if it's touching our bear. What we've done is basically made our baseballs fall and go to a random position in the sky and then it'll keep on falling into, and it'll keep on sensing until it touches the ground if it touches our bear. Thank you for watching part one of Dodge the Ball and if you enjoyed it or learned something new be sure to hit that like and subscribe button and if you hit that subscribe button you'll know when I post part two. So I'll see you guys in part two of making a Dodge the Ball game.